What we're going to do today is we're going to make some deer antler pendants out of naturally antler. Now, if you're purchasing antlers from other people and you want to make sure they are naturally shed, the thing you look for is at the base, it's very porous. Now, this is where it had separated from the skull plate. A antler that was taken from a deer with a saw by a hunter or a trapper will be either very smooth at this point or it will be cut off at this point here it'll be very obvious that it had been sawed off and not fallen off like this one here. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to saw off some of these points, the ones that are usable, like these ones here, were chewed off by rodents. You can see some of that rodent tooth there. I don't know if the camera can pick that up. I can take a still picture and show that. But what we're going to do is we're going to make some pendants out of the points as well as to sl do some slice segments along the edges. So pretty much the only thing that you need for this is a vise and a saw and some newspaper or fabric that will cushion the antler in the vise and we'll show you that in a minute. So our first step is to take our antler and figure out what angle we're going to need it on. Put your fabric in the vise and find what the flattest position for that is. Now you want to tighten it, but you don't want it so tight that it will crush the antler. Sometimes it happens where the antler is crushed by the force of the vise or cracked and you definitely don't want that. So, now that we got this straight as possible, we're going to find the point that we're going to make our first cut off and how that's going to be straight. I think right about there. And you just have to go very, very slow at first until you get that cut in the right position. feel that it's starting to get towards the end of it, just slowly, just very slowly finish it off. Because if you go too fast you're going to splinter it and then you're going to have to do a lot of sanding to hide that damage. When you're holding on to the tip, you don't want to put any pressure at all. Just hold it in place.
there's our smooth antler cut. So that's our first cut. We're going to continue going up the sides. I'm going to bring this in for a closer up shot. There's one of our discs. So I'm just going to cut off a few more and then come back when I get a bunch made for the next step in the creation of the pendants. And these are all of my various pieces that are going to be sanded and I do do my sanding by machine. I use a modified belt and disc sander. You can pick these up at pretty much any hardware store. So I'm not going to turn on right now but you just pretty much hold it in nice and flat steady until you get it smooth. Now this is very rough right now. So I'm going to set up and film me doing a few of these so you get an idea of what I'm doing. It's going to be extremely loud. Now one of the things when you're working with this machinery is no jewelry, no bracelets or rings or anything because you don't want to risk getting them stuck in those belts and pulling you in because that can cause quite a bit of damage. So first to get myself used to it I'm going to work on the long one. That way I'm not in. I'm like this until I get a feel for it because I haven't done this in about a year. So I'm going to turn the machine on. It's going to be rather noisy so I'm not going to speak over this.
that's got it pretty smooth. When it comes to ones that are a little bit more concave, you can just use the top of it there. I'll show you. much that grinds it it gives it it starts the concave but I'll just stop the camera for now because this is going to take a very very long time the sanding is done you can see that this is a lot different than it had been it's rounded and smoothed the other ones there is no trace of green on them and they're very smooth so the next step in this process is drilling. So I've been out here for probably about an hour sanding. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break and clean the machine. One thing that I should have noted earlier is that this is a very, very messy job. All of this is antler dust in little bits and has to be cleaned out. Now this will get all over your clothes and everything. So you're going to want to wear something that you don't mind if it gets dusty and dirty as well as make sure that you shower afterwards because you're going to smell like burnt antler which smells like burnt hair which I don't mind anymore, I'm used to it but most people will find it rather disgusting so I'm going to take a break, clean the machine and then on to step two as you see they're very natural color right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that into a more aged look so what I did is I took some instant coffee and mixed a little bit of water in with it to make a paint. You can also soak them in tea if you want. And I just paint along the edges. And don't worry if it spills a little bit onto the sides and you'll find out why. I'm just going to do these all up really quick because that's all it needs. So if you do get a spill like this, just rub it in with your fingers and give it a quick buff with this. It's pretty 
are really hard to see at that angle, but this has given it a really nice aged look. I will be putting photos of this in the daylight, but that's pretty much it. Now where I got a bit of a darker spot there, I'm going to get some plain water. I'm going to make it a little bit more watered down and stain the inside. It's a really nice, light, toasty color. Some areas you might want to make a little darker than others. Anyway, I'm going to finish all of these up, and then come back when it's time to spray lacquer. You can see these a lot better in this lighting. You can see that the coffee has gone into every little crack and crevice and really brought out the lines. Now this is going to change a bit because when I put the spray lacquer on it's going to turn liquid again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you spray lacquering and the change it makes. I have to shake up the can really good. And the same as other projects I've shown, you have to do very light coats little burst because you don't want runs. You can do a heavy over mist after that. So if you do it too heavy, your antler is going to stick to the cardboard, and you don't want that. Just shifting them a little bit now. I'm going to put a little bit more on this one, because I see that the spray has not gone into all of the little cracks. And there we go. So we're going to come back when this dries and do the other side. And then I will show you the finished pro product after. The last step in designing the pendants is to put a wire wrap onto them. So all I do is get a length of wire. And use my rounded nose pliers. Make a bit of a spiral, clamp it down, you have a nice spiral. I have no idea who that is. It's a little green trousseau. Put it down. Now it's going to be up like this, so then you just squish it. Straighten your wire. Curl it down through the hole again. Hold the wire tight and just pull upwards so you get a bit of a rounded spot there and then squeeze it through.
you filming right now? Yep. Why, do you have something to show me? Yeah. Well, there's one less than we did. You went flying? Yeah. I'll find it. That's the finished pendant. Well, you got four anyways. Yeah. Thank you.